Eight of the world's greatest Super Mario Bros. players are here to compete in a tournament like never before. Each speedrunner has their own Nintendo Entertainment System, their own cathode ray tube television, their own controller, and they're playing Super Mario Bros. like it's 1985. Only to make it easier to follow what's going on, I've combined their eight screens into one. This is the Any% percent Tournament, so the runners are allowed to do whatever it takes to rescue Princess Toadstool and restore the fallen kingdom of the Mushroom People as quickly as possible. This includes taking the warp zones in 1-2 and 4-2, which leaves them with just eight levels to complete. Time starts when they gain control of Mario in 1-1 and ends when they touch the axe in 8-4. Here are the runners participating in the Any% percent race today. Let's count them in. Three, two, one, go! Oh, and they're off. Well, we got people going for mushrooms. How much do you think the mushroom is going to cost them? The mushroom is pretty quick, but the mushroom is faster than a death. Mushroom is a lot faster than a death. That's absolutely true. Look at them all go. Oh man, yeah, yeah, no, sorry. I am just a little speechless that it's actually up and running to have all of these wonderful speedrunners here. And it worked. It's, it's incredible. Okay, so two and a, two and a half seconds between the group. Nivsky, you lost a frame roll. What did you I do? I did. I got a bad underground. The game only lets you through every 21 frames, so he lost one. Uh, Jeremy with the bonk on that block, just a little late on the jump there. Tied with Supersonic at the back now. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, and a little short on that pipe jump from Cosmic. That's going to put him back a few frame rolls. So it looks like we have some Wes and Scalpel in the front, Nifsky behind, Cosmic behind that. The mushroom getters should mushroom be coming across. Coming yeah, mushroom. Well. Oh, they have most of them got fire. The fire will be useful for jumping over the pipes later and everything. Hey, who killed Lakitu? I did. <laughs> <laughs> who he had killed to go. Lakitu? Why? <laughs> he had to go. No, he was just doing whatever. He was not innocent. Look, he, he, you know, they're running so Tossing fast. Tossing down spiky things. Lakitu doesn't do anything. You didn't have to kill him. Okay, somewhat scalpel, Nivsky, Cosmic, and then here come our fire crew. Cosmic with the flagpole glitch. Oh, what's that? Oh I did flagpole glitch, yeah. Nice! That was sweet! Yeah. <laughs> that flagpole glitch raises a few questions. Let's head to our speedrunning scientist, Bismuth, to break it down. In general, speedrunners grab the top of the flagpole. This is faster because while you always have to wait for the flag to go down, if you grab it near the top, you'll be a bit higher and accelerate to the castle faster. Cosmic grabbed the pole even lower than the bottom, below where you normally can, by clipping into the block with 5 frame perfect button presses. This causes the game to skip lowering the flag and saves a third of a second. Not quite enough to catch up to Nifsky and Scalpel, but into striking distance. So somewhere and Scalpel are still in the front, Nivsky and Cosmic tied behind them, and then the fire group. This part they have to bump to warp to the right spot, so it looks like they're all doing the same bumping on the platform there. Oh no. Scalpel did pretty good. Pretty Cosmic good. needed a little second to get down that pipe. I was going to say with the, uh, the fire Marios, Will had some trouble moving under that one yeah, Mario they, High they had to, section. They had to, oh did someone fall? Someone fell. I wonder if it's the same route for fire, or maybe there's a faster route. Rupert fell. Uh, to go a different way. It's it's you want it. You go the same direction, but you you have it's a little easier jumping over pipes and. We're always going to the right. You're always going to the right. Can't go back. Cosmic takes a death in eight one. Some West and Scalpel still in the lead, and Nifsky just right behind. And then our fire crew, Kriller in the front of the fire crew, Jeremy behind that, Supersonic and Cosmic with his death, and no fire is in last. Should have got the mushroom. It's a, it's a hard call. It takes time if you're going for first, you know. You kind of want to stay small. Some Wes held the world record in this game twice back in 2018. And of course, Nivsky holds it right now. 8-1 is a really tight level. You can't slow down at all if, or you'll lose a full third of a second. Oh, Scalpel's in first place. Scalpel is actually the world record holder on 4x4 and 5x5 Rubik's Cube solving blindfolded. He'll look at the cube, memorize all the moves he... Oh, oh no, he just crashed into the Buzzy Beetle! 
Oh, and then some yeah, West with the bonk, and Nivsky is clearly in the lead. And some West right behind that. Then comes our fire crew, Jeremy Kriller, and Supersonic has lost his fire, but at least he didn't die. At least he didn't die. At least he didn't die. I just saw on the bottom left there that Scalpel took a tumble into the pit. That's his second death, so he'll be on one life for the rest of the race. Here the Hammer Bros might pose a problem no. unless you were Nifsky and you memorized what the Hammer Bros are gonna do. I know the patterns. I don't. And some West right behind that. Jeremy, the fire, Jeremy with the fire will not be threatened by the Hammer Bros. And this is it. Oh, this is it. Going into 8-4, the final level. How long has it been? It's only been four minutes, and they're already on the last level of the game. Nifsky will be the first one in, followed by some Wes. Two frame rules behind. That first place, you get a couple extra points, so that jump, there's a few frames to get over that pit. You have to do it properly. Looks like Nivsky did the walk off the pipe strat to do this wall jump. Gets it. Some West gets it too. This is actually pretty close. This turnaround is harder on CRTs that cut off your thing. We're going to see they both make it. They're both in the water section. Kriller right behind, just getting into the water section. Kriller took that from Jeremy, third place right now. Nivsky avoiding all the fire bars and bloopers. Is Bowser going to be kind to Nivsky, do you think? We can only hope. We can only hope. No. <laughs> I got oh, Larry to beat. Yes. Oh, it takes first place. Kriller coming in with fire still, right? Yes, takes out yeah. right through Let's second go, place. Man. Jeremy. And Supersonic letting Bowser get Let's out of go, his way Kriller. and gets it. Fourth place. Nifsky with a 459, a sub five in competition. That was impressive. Okay, here we're gonna watch Cosmic coming through for fifth place. Excellent, easy does it. All right, and Scalpel. Oh, oh makes it through. Nice and easy. <laughs> Scalpel in sixth place. Okay, now we got, uh, waiting for Wes and Rupert here. And Wes gets it. And let's switch to Rupert. Yeah, just check the tape and it looked like Rupert missed the wrong warp in 4-2. That's what put him so far behind. Oh, oh that's a tricky one. Yeah, maybe it's not so tricky if you got the mushroom. Yeah, the mushroom definitely helps Rupert out here. Oh my goodness. And Rupert coming into 8-4. Oh my gosh. So Rupert is actually the head moderator on the Super Mario Bros. leaderboards. So he has been in the community for a very, very long time, moderating many games since like 2013, 2015. Oh, no. uh, moderating games? So moderate, So when a speedrunner submits a run, they need someone to check it over and make sure it's okay. And Rupert has been in charge of that for a while. Very cool. A lot of, actually, some of the other players here are also verifiers or moderators as well. I know Cosmic is a moderator. And they all help. Jeremy. Wow. Nice, backup. nice, good, see? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Just make sure we get to the water section there. Perfect. We'll see if Potaboo, the Potaboo is what took some Wes out. Oh, and under, yay! So Nivsky puts 10 points for himself on the board with a first place finish, beating the entire game in a mere four minutes, 59 seconds, and 24 milliseconds, a full seven seconds faster than Kriller 37 in second place. Nivsky, a Super Mario Bros. prodigy, only half the age of the game, but one of its most dedicated. Nivsky first achieved the world record in Super Mario Bros. Any% in November of 2020, and has held it a total of four times, and in fact, holds it still with a 454.798, 
achieved August of this year. One of the next generation of Super Mario Bros. speedrunners, Nivsky prefers playing the game with a keyboard, an emulator, but today he's on a controller like the rest of us and proving that his hard-won skill translates directly. Just behind Nivsky in the final room of 8-4 was Sum Wes. Sum Wes has also held the world record in Super Mario Bros., achieving first place on May 25th, yes! 2018, record. and following it up with a second world record of 455.796 in October that same year. 455! Sum Wes is also a phenomenal Marble Madness speedrunner, having held the world record for that game multiple times, most recently with a 239.383, which currently stands in second place. Boom! 239! We'll have more time to meet the rest of the speedrunners soon, but let's get right back into the action for the second race of the Any% Percent Tournament, after a short word about one of our sponsors. Red Rocks Community College in Colorado is a premier educational institution offering a wide range of courses, certificate programs, and degrees with a heavy emphasis on real-world applicability. The Visual, Audio, and Media Arts Department provides relevant, high-quality, and innovative educational programs in photography, graphic design, videography, and journalism. Much of the live footage in the video you are watching right now has been captured by current students to prepare them for careers in the industry. Special thanks are owed to Tiff, Paul, and the entire crew for your time, expertise, and hard work. Thank you. Let's get right back into the action for the second race of the Any% Percent Tournament. Let's count them in. Three, two, one, go! All of our Fire Mario still went for the mushroom, still went for Fire Mario. The, the slight uh, lead that it looks like Cosmic has is because he hit start just a tiny bit ahead of time. So we're going to have to trust the, uh, trust, timing the tower. trust the timing tower on the left. That is each individual timing. I saw Jeremy taking different jumps over Did before it? that first pipe than the other mushroom getters. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Same time. But it does look like he did lose a frame roll uh, over the others, mushroom getters. So Cosmic and the other three are tied. They are at the same point. Cosmic, Sunwest, Nivsky, and Scalpel. Oh, it looks like we did have a bonk there. So Cosmic is going to lose one, two or three thirds of a second there with that mistake. Jeremy's a little bit behind. I'm taking out the lack of two. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, it looks like Three. Cosmic lost yeah, two go. thirds of a second. But some West, Nivsky, and Scalpel are all tied, and behind them, Supersonic, Rupert, Kriller, and then Jeremy in the back here. I really like the difference of going for the Fire Flower or not. I think it's a strong strategic difference because, you know, then you can avoid a, a tragedy later. Yeah, you know, you could plan for it even. You know, you get to Bowser, you don't have to worry about those hammers. Or that Potaboo that took out some West in the last one, just jump right through. Coming up in 4-2, the runners are going to use that wrong warp to get to the warp zone faster. Let's go to Bismuth to explain how it works. On each pipe or vine transition, the game uses the position of the screen to determine where to send Mario. By bumping into blocks, Mario can end up further to the right than is normally possible, which means he can enter the pipe and still be taken to the warp zone. The vine in the warp zone takes a long time to climb, so taking the pipe is close to 4 seconds faster despite the extra setup. If you make a mistake and scroll the screen too far, there's no way to scroll it back and the pipe will take you to the bonus room. This also puts you past the level's midway checkpoint so you can no longer go back. You have to game over and restart in 4-1. This is what happened to Rupert83 in the first race. 4-1 is really the easiest level for these guys. You know, it's yeah, there's nothing special in 4-1. Why is 4-1 the easiest? Because there's no, no frame no, specific timing? There's nothing really special, unless you're doing a flagpole glitch, which we might see later. I think we, well, we saw one. But, I saw one already. You know, we might, but nothing too special. Cosmic into front again? What is going on here? Well, maybe Did depending I miss on the, on the uh, it could recorder be. timing. No, it looks no, like Cosmic looks like and Scalpel. So Nivsky and West both lost a little time there, so Cosmic and Scalpel are tied. 
So, Cosmic and Scalpel coming through 8-1 here. 8-1 is the longest level here to an extent. 8-4 is pretty long as well, and depending on mazes and stuff, but 8-1 is just really long. And it's just run and jump at the right time, kind of like a rhythm game almost. You're just hitting, yeah. just got to jump gotta at the right time. To do it. There is a, um, a way to do it faster called Plate 1, but it's actually quite difficult to do. I don't think we're going to, I can guarantee we're not going to see that in this setting. Nifsky's going to prove me wrong with that. <laughs> so, Cosmic and Scalpel still tied. Nifsky one frame rule behind, and somewhere two thirds of a second behind Nifsky, and our Fire Mario people right behind that. That trick there is very tricky, the one that Sun West just bumped against the pipe. That, that trick, I that, saw that. that jump, you have to slow down to avoid the, the... No, it's to avoid the piranha plant. Looks like Rupert took some damage. That's what the fire flower is for. So, Jeremy still in last. Cosmic and Scalpel tied. Nifsky won behind. Sun West lost another second, looks like. And then Supersonic Kriller, Rupert and Jeremy. Cosmic and Scalpel are tied to the frame. Let's see if the Hammer Bros are nice to them. Or if they know what the Hammer Bros are going to do. Oh, Wes. Hammer Bro was not nice to Wes. Oh, boy. Oh, Wes. Oh, man. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck to you, too. Cosmic and Scalpel tied to the frame. Nifsky one frame rule behind that. Looks like, oh man, Supersonic and Kriller are also tied to the frame in fourth and fifth. Here we're gonna see, oh, Cosmic going for the one frame jump to get, take away. Oh, and he gets it. Oh, That trick is very difficult. Nifsky was going for a fast excel, it looked like, to try and make up some space. Cosmic in front, Scalpel behind, Nifsky behind that. This is a battle for first, second, and third. Oh my goodness. These guys, look at how in sync they are. They know exact route. See how Bowser is nice. Is Bowser nice to Cosmic? And he is! Cosmic Scalpel nipped his wild times. mind! Look Whoa. at those! Done. Look Let's at go. those times! That's insane. And Kriller coming in right after. Top Four. three sub five. And then Jeremy. Oh Four my. Look at that! <laughs> oh, 459 no. across the board I did, in top I did three. one frame, did you? No, I didn't. Okay. Frame. That won the race. Now someone's coming in. I knew two frame patterns, so I was just like, I'm just gonna take I just heard them saying you get low to boo if you go slow, and I was like, I'll go fast. <laughs> And then Supersonic. Oh, look at that. An incredible finish. Three runners completed the entire game in under five minutes. Settled by the daring decision from Cosmic to go for the one frame wall jump in the second room of 8-4. After the first two races, we have Nifsky in first place with 16 total points, followed by Cosmic with 14 and Kriller 37, one of the fire crew with 13 points. There are six more races in the Any% Present Tournament and the entire Warpless Tournament after that. So don't forget to subscribe and tune in next time to see who will win and take home the grand prize of one bite. That's 256 US dollars. Also, if you wanted to attend the next tournament or you think you have what it takes to compete, join the Discord and check the description for more information.